Ah, RTR Imperium Serectum. It's a great mod. You've seen plenty of videos about it, and you can't wait to load it up. So you sit there for the first time, and you press Start Campaign. And then this happens. And before long, you're staring down the barrel of a large army come to seize down your last settlements, wondering, where did it all go wrong? Well, today I'm going to be showing you the five best factions to play when you first load up the game. Factions for beginners or people new to RTR Imperium Serectum. They are not necessarily the easiest factions in the game, guys, but they are all factions that are going to teach you a huge amount about how to play the game and how you can improve your gameplay. Now, remember, guys, all of these factions are only going to be remastered factions that I'm listing, so factions that you're going to get the full experience out of. So they are the Greeks, the Thracians, Illyrians, and the Anatolians to some extent, and, of course, the Hellenistic factions. So we're only going to be picking from those ones of course Rome would be a very easy faction to start but it isn't done yet so I don't want to show it off but without further ado let's get into our first choice first up is the Cretan faction of Kaidonia which is going to teach you all the basics of the game now Crete is pretty much like the beginner's island of RAS very similar to how the island of Ireland is in CK3 or CK2. This is where you're gonna learn all the basics for yourself going forward. With a relatively secure position on the left-hand side of the island, you can methodically take out all of the factions going across the island to make a lot of money from trade and farming and all that sort of thing while teaching yourself the battles without having too many huge battles and too little economy to deal with as well. So it's gonna teach you all of those basics for yourself. And when you do take Crete fully, you have plenty of options for expansion with roads out here to the east, the Peloponnese to your northwest, and the myriad of Aegean islands straight to your north. So you can kind of choose where you want to go once you've conquered all of Crete. There's only one thing to worry about here, guys. And if you see this little bit of land here is encased in red, that means that it is bordering Sparta because it has a little land border there to make Sparta navally invade. So do worry about that if you want to. However, if you check out this video where we took all of Crete within 15 turns, you'll see that Sparta didn't invade once so it's not something you need to worry about too much going forward in the campaign but overall a fantastic faction to start off with now once you've got your feet under the table with Kaidonia and learnt the basics of the game why not dip a toe into the dynamic and dangerous world of Greek politics with the Aetolian League there are a myriad of factions on the Peloponnese and in central Greece, but the Aetolians are probably the best one to learn with for a few reasons. First of all, it's going to teach you border management very, very well with the cultural generic and the rebel settlements to your north to stop the Macedonians coming down and ruffle stomping you. This faction, as you can see, also pretty much guards all of the passes going from north to south Greece, so it's in a very good defensible position. And thirdly, you are in the very rich region of Greece with the Peloponnese just below you that is split into a number of warring factions that you can take out one by one to get very rich very quickly and become the predominant power before turning on the hegemon of Greece, the Antigonids, going forward. So a very good faction overall with a nice skirmisher roster too. If you want to learn more about this faction, guys, check out my guide down in the description 
below. If the Greeks really aren't your thing guys, then starting as the Liburni, the Illyrian pirates in the north of Illyria is a very good option. This faction is very good at teaching you a myriad of things, most notably the economy, because it relies very heavily on trade in these low fertility regions, but it is also very close to some very high fertility regions in Patavium over here in the northeast of Italia. It also starts out with very clearly defined, easy to take out enemies with rebel territories up to the north. So once the north is secured, you can just move down south at your own pace and do what you want. The chances are with the Liburni that you're gonna take over quite a lot of territory pretty quickly. So that's also gonna teach you some more about economy management and empire management, as well as the AOR system going forward. So this is a really good faction to learn a lot about the economy in game. And in fact, it's an incredibly fun faction as well, because I've played them myself. If you want to have a look at some more Illyrian gameplay, check out this campaign on the channel, guys. If you're not so sure about a larger start, but you still want the same freedom that is offered by the Liburni, then Rhodes is the option for you. Situated on the island of Rhodos, of course, with another little island in between you and Crete, you have plenty of opportunity for going and doing whatever you want. On top of that, you are in a pretty secure position with not a huge amount of risk from naval invasions, and you can pick out smaller and weaker territories to go and invade all around the Mediterranean. From Crete across here to the Peloponnese in Greece, and maybe even some of these minor nations in the Sea of Marmara as well, you have plenty of options to attack. If you are feeling particularly adventurous, guys, then all of this territory of the Ptolemies in Lycia is a great option to attack early game because it's pretty rich land that is all pretty heavily developed right from the start of the game. Of course, you may incur the wrath of the Ptolemies, but who doesn't like a little bit of a kamikaze attack? And to top it all off, guys, you get probably one of the best missile units in the game, if not the best, the Rhodian Slingers that are an armor-piercing eight missile attack slinger unit. These guys are genuinely insane against the armor of the Hoplite, the Thuriophoroi, and the Pikeman. Honestly, really, really good unit. I would recommend getting these guys as much as possible. And if you want to see what crazy shenanigans you can get up to as Rhodes, guys, check out this video here. That should really give you an idea of just the craziness you can get up to as this nation. And finally, guys, once you've put everything together and you've learned all about the game, I think you can challenge yourself with a game as the Antigonids, the Hegemons of Greece. Now, these guys are not the easiest faction if you do things slightly wrong because they are bordering so many different factions in the game. And if you're playing on high difficulties, all of those factions could attack you pretty quickly. However, if you have learnt enough, you are going to find that this faction will teach you a huge amount about the game and border management and how the AI operates as well. You, of course, start in a dominant position in Greece as the hegemon of Greece themselves. And the way to win as these guys is to methodically take out each faction that declares war on you, don't worry about losing one or two settlements against the AI. The AI is generally quite slow at taking settlements. So if you get attacked by two enemies at the same time, take out one methodically, come back, retrain, go and fight the other one. And by doing that, you can take out Greece pretty quickly and then become an absolute superpower mid-game with all the rich regions in Greece. This faction is a fantastic learning faction, in my opinion, and one of the best factions in the game with one of the best rosters as well. If you want to take a closer look at its roster, guys, check out that video there. And I hope this video has helped you decide which faction you want to start as when you first load up RTR Imperium Serectum. Each one will teach you different things and give you a different perspective 
on the game. So I hope you did enjoy this video, guys. Make sure you do like and subscribe. Once again, massive thank you to Zero Suit Samus, Pascal De Laurier, and David D as the channel members on the channel. Big shout out to you guys, and if you are interested, a link is down in the description. But without further ado, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all again on the next video.